Let me be clear, I think Lego Animal Crossing is a great idea. It's a perfect match. But it's crazy to me what they've done to the proportions. Tom Nook looks like this. Lego Tom Nook looks like a full-on man. This is not cute anymore. He looks like he looks like a guy who could wrestle you. <laughs> So we're basically getting a sequel to last week's delayed input in that this week we have more reports of widespread layoffs at studios such as Telltale and Naughty Dog. Now here's the thing. I understand that a lot of the recent tightening up sort of result of the overhiring that came with the pandemic gaming boom. Seems like a lot of game studios across the board experienced a surge in business that has tapered off now that normal people have returned outdoors. Unlike me, I love the indoors. But that's the Bloombergian analysis. It's not fun to talk about. It's just bad news. But there's something in the middle of Kotaku's reporting of the Naughty Dog situation, in which at least 25 contractors were laid off, that got picked up by other news sites almost more than the headline itself. Down here, one source now tells Kotaku that the multiplayer game, while not completely cancelled, is basically on ice at this point. At the beginning of this year, I would have told you that the new Last of Us multiplayer game would obviously be a success. That it would obviously kick off Sony's Game as a Service initiative to great applause. And here we are today. Uh, this is what I want to discuss tonight. However, I would like to start with something almost entirely unrelated. Because there's an image that has not escaped my mind all week long. And it's from a TV commercial for Amazon Web Services. Machine learning to predict what customers will like. So what did we just watch? So this frustrated artist here is trying to figure out how to make this orc more likable. She's got an elemental selection tool down here. She drags fire onto the orc's club, and we immediately see its likability jump from 49% to 90%. Look at these faces. They know. The orc has achieved high likability. It's crazy. It's clearly a big-budget national broadcast TV commercial that is really just targeting a very narrow market of big business decision makers. Somehow, this is an advertisable fantasy to people in power. Don't you just wish AI could just tell you what your customers would like? Because yes, I realize it's not meant to be taken literally. It's a dramatization. It's a simplification. I don't believe Amazon believes that adding blue flame to an orc's club will increase its likability by 41%. But what they're selling to you, the offer, is the ability to remove the guesswork from creating art. And that's what's obscene. It's like, even if, hey, even if we're just talking about video games, some of the best reviewed video games of all time make no effort to be likable. However, games as a service, those have to be likable. Those have to, those have to keep customers happy continuously. They got to keep them smiling, keep their bellies full, keep their toes tapping, keep their wallets open. So it's funny to talk about The Last of Us, which is a series that, at many points, goes out of its way to make you unhappy. Still... It's nuts that The Last of Us 1, when it came out in 2013, did launch with a full-on multiplayer mode, and it is so clear that they will never do that for free ever again. Still, in 2018, when they were promoting Last of Us Part 2, it was confirmed. We're doing multiplayer again. Multiplayer is coming back. We're not going to talk details yet about what form that takes, but we can confirm there will be multiplayer. And then for the rest of this game mode's life, it exists in this constant state of, we can't wait to share more. A year later in 2019, this is one year before The Last of Us Part Two comes out, Naughty Dog has an update. You will eventually experience the fruits of our team's online ambition, but not as part of The Last of Us Part Two. 
When and where it will be realized is still to be determined. But rest assured, we are as big a fan of factions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready. Naughty dog. Okay, that makes sense. Do what you gotta do. Get The Last of Us Part 2 out, launch the multiplayer portion whenever you feel like. I'm not gonna hassle you for that. And then there was no update. Last of Us Part 2 comes and goes. Nothing. For years. Until. The final block of Summer Game Fest 2022. Neil Druckmann let the live audience know that the multiplayer game is big. Bigger in some ways than the single player games even. It's going to have its own story and its own characters. Best of all, they were able to reveal a piece of concept art. And just so you know this is all real, he listed off the lead developers. It's being headed by Vinith Agarwal, um, Anthony Newman, and uh, Joe Padnetti, all veterans of Uncharted and Last of Us. And you're going to see a lot more of this game come next year. Also, probably important to note that Jeff even refers to it as a live game at this point. Can't wait to see Naughty Dog storytelling fused with multiplayer live game. Uh, it's, it's something special. I, we can't wait to show it either. Okay, well... Um, so it's January of 2023. The next year is here, and already Naughty Dog's making a post about how big of a year it's going to be for The Last of Us. We got the HBO show coming. We got, the, we got uh, part one is coming to PC. And how about this? A second piece of concept art for the multiplayer game. Look at that. On top of that, the enticing message. Later this year, we will begin to offer you some details on our ambitious The Last of Us multiplayer game. Okay, so the update came in May, a couple of days after Sony had its big PlayStation showcase, which for some reason did not contain a second of The Last of Us multiplayer game. Naughty Dog says what's best for the game is to give it more time. Our team will continue to work on the project as well as our other games in development, including a brand new single player experience. We look forward to sharing more soon. Naughty Dog. Wow, it practically sounded like good news. However, not a coincidence that was also posted the same day as this Jason Schreier scoop. A whole article on Bloomberg explaining that Sony had slowed down development of the Last of Us multiplayer game. Here's the most interesting part of this article. Sony has invested heavily in games as a service, or video games designed to be monetized beyond their initial sales through ongoing purchases. I just realized I kind of assumed you already knew what games as a service meant, but uh, that's what that means. As part of that push, it asked another of its video game studios, Seattle-based Bungie, to evaluate the games across its portfolio. Bungie raised questions about The Last of Us multiplayer project's ability to keep players engaged for a long period of time, which led to the reassessment. Essentially, Bungie, masters of the game as a service, were wandering around Sony Studios and letting them know where their games fall on the likability meter. And honestly, I get it. I get why they would do that. Like, long-term player engagement is impossibly difficult to achieve. Ask the psychologists and mathematicians who formulate the Diablo 4 season passes. Man, can you imagine if poor Blizzard could just ask machine learning what kind of loot doing a dungeon raid should give you? Could have avoided so much fuss. So that Bloomberg article happened, you know, four months ago, and quite frankly, I kind of forgot it happened. It was this Kotaku story about the contracted employees being laid off that I think sealed the deal for me that the Last of Us multiplayer game is probably, in all likelihood, basically on ice at this point. Truthfully, despite Naughty Dog's perpetual enthusiasm to show me this game, I don't expect to ever see it. And my point in all of this is just, I don't think there's a trick to creating a game as a service. Naughty Dog has been trying. They don't want to delay the game this much. They just can't figure it out. And I know Amazon Web Services doesn't know how to do it. I don't think Bungie knows how to do it. 
I'm not convinced Epic knows how to create a successful game as a service. I think it's just 91% luck. Though to be completely fair and honest and potentially destroy the whole point I was trying to make, it does look as though MiHoYo is about to go three for three. There's some sort of secret code only they have cracked. I'm not sure, but I feel like it's got something to do with anime. Naughty Dog. Have you considered anime? Don't be too proud. You might be surprised that you like it. And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. Something I was thinking about this week. I don't remember feeling this way before, but I'm starting to like feel bad for video games as they get announced. Actively feeling sympathetic for their very existence. Where, you know, previously you would feel excited for a new game announcement, or maybe I would shrug my shoulders. Now it's like, I feel sorry for you. This next segment is dedicated to those special games. It's called Bless Your Heart. Foam Stars, bless your heart. Lords of the Fallen, bless your heart. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Bless your heart. Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. Bless your heart. Song of New New, A League of Legends story. Bless your heart. 